Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome. It is another epic of League Unlocked. My name is Eric, a little San Holo, aka Han Solo, on today's epi as we look back at one of the greatest rivalries head to heads in the history of the game. We used to always be talking Faker versus Uzi, two of the goats, two of the the two most famous players in the entire scene. As Uzi retires, this rivalry kind of just transitioned more into that Faker versus Zhaohu rivalry, which, of course, we are getting another chapter of it written in the Weibo versus T1 Grand Finals of 2023, but a little bit of buildup. Because this goes back to 2016 that these guys have met up time and time again internationally, and it all started with that midseason invitational in 2016. Zhao Hu wasn't around in 2013, uh, 2014 eras when Uzi was making it to these finals at the World Championship. So 2016 MSI, and if you recall, I know we're seven plus years ago now, so you gotta really look back in that memory bank of yours. But this is where the group stage, this is CLG, is at this midseason invitational. RNG goes eight and two. They beat SKT once in the group stage. They almost beat them twice, but they finished first in that group stage round robin everyone was feeling good about them it's in china skt went six and four they were struggling a little bit this is before they changed the rules for seeding because skt was a little shaky in the group stage they ended up as the four seed so rng as that top seed matched up against them in the semi-finals in the modern day rng on no plane of existence would be choosing to match up against SKT, but they hadn't changed that formatting yet. So they draw them in semis and proceed to lose 3-1. They win the first game and it ends up being a perfect game for SKT in that fourth and decisive matchup where they would go on to finals and eventually beat CLG. This is the Mata Woosh era of RNG. So there was no Uzi at this point in this tournament, but Zhao Hu, of course, was there and his first taste of getting beat up by Faker and SKT on those international events and he didn't have to wait very long to relive that because that very same year again they met up in the quarterfinals did RNG and SKT it wasn't the semis this time it was quarters and this is the iconic uh, Duke NAR play that we all remember and have probably seen 20 or 30 times over the years but this one actually had, this series had some spicy picks out of Zhao Hu in particular. He was playing the Aurelian Soul and the Vladimir Faker had the Malzahar. It feels like specifically, and we'll, we'll get to this in some of these later matchups, Faker seems to level up when he's matching up against not just RNG, but Zhao Hu in particular. It was less so the case in this 2016 series. Uh, he didn't really need to pop off because the rest of SKT was getting it done for him. See the NAR play out of Duke. But as we go down this list, Faker's level up. It's probably partially to do with the fact that he's at these international events where he gets a little bit of a Faker buff anyways, but always seems like he steps up to another level when he's going opposite of Xiao Hu. This ends up being the second straight world championship for Faker and the boys, third overall for the Demon King and RNG. Xiao Hu again left looking up to their big daddy gods that are SKT as they would lose in quarters and run it. This was, Uzi came into the lineup for the summer split. So this quarterfinals loss was still Uzi. 2017 RNG runs it back and they get not lucky, but we don't see them in MSI, but we do see them one stage further that they match up against SKT, the 2017 semifinals. And this is one of the most iconic series in all of the world championships. You have Uzi picking up a vein in front of the hometown Chinese crowd who absolutely lost their minds when he picked it. Obviously, they pick up a win with that pick and... The real story, of course, from this one is the five straight games of Galio for Faker. Head scratcher that it never gets banned. Head scratcher what this dude was doing on the gargoyle in the mid lane. This is usually we 
associate with a supportive type pick in the mid lane, but this guy was he was getting the most CS in a lot of these games. He was doing some nutty damage on that Galio. Meanwhile, also saving his team across the map with those heroic entrances um, to keep his teammates alive. This is the Hooney era SKT, Peanut and Blank swapping in the jungle spot. But this was, this was an underperforming SKT team that Faker dragged to the finals before they eventually got 3-0'd by Samsung, of course. We know the history there, but it was RNG getting beat up on one more time. Xiaohu again suffering the wrath of Faker. 2018 was the year of RNG, and to, I'm not calling it a coincidence, the biggest down year of SKT, Xiaohu and Uzi didn't have to deal with SKT internationally because they could barely even be contending in the LCK for playoffs. So 2018, no rivalry because Faker and SKT weren't at the same level. 2019, the revamped SKT lineup. And not only did we get to see them again at Worlds, this time it was the group stage. And they just always deliver. There's never absolute stomps between these two matchups. Yes, SKT ultimately 2-0'd these group stage and was heavily responsible for eliminating RNG, who ended up finishing 3-3 three and three because they dropped the game to Fnatic. They didn't advance for the first time in Uzi's career. We talked about him not making top eight. But these two matchups, you had uh, a crazy comeback from SKT. And I mean, Xiaohu, again, always spicy picks against SKT. He was playing Kale mid. Then this is the famous, or infamous if you're an RNG fan, Twisted Fate. Not a backdoor, but the triple TP, incredible macro play out of Faker and SKT to come away with the win. These, these were some of the best two games that we've had in this rivalry, even though it didn't ultimately end up being uh, a knockout round stage. It was still absolutely it delivered. This was the, the final time this rivalry would see the Uzi versus Faker matchup as we get to these uh, bottom two tournaments. This is when the Xiaohu era fully takes over and that came to fruition at 2022 MSI. Already the defending champs from the year before, Xiaohu returns to the mid lane and this is finally after these four international showdowns where Xiaohu gets his revenge, gets his first best of five series win against SKT and Faker. Now T1 at this point in the grand finals of MSI. They went one and one in the Rumble stage. And this finals, despite it being, if you looked at the highlight reels, it was Faker. You had the Lissandra Baron play that he had. He has the, the Juke surviving a 1v3 gank on the LeBlanc, but... It's RNG that's getting the last laugh. Xiaohu had himself a pretty solid series himself. Game five, it's obviously uh, Ming's Rakong that ends up finding an insane engage and Xiaohu's Lissandra that gets engaged on and eventually turns that entire team fight over for them to capture their back to back MSI titles for Xiaohu and the organization of course. And this is what started the string of runner-up finishes for T1. They would go on to finish second. They finished second at this MSI, second in LCK Summer, second at Worlds that year, second in LCK Spring the following year. It all started with what Xiaohu and the boys did to Faker to get their revenge at that mid-season invitational. And Xiaohu passes Faker for MSI titles with his third, so. This is where the rivalry really heated up because you finally got RNG swinging back, taking a jab their way. And then we got the rematch at 2022 Worlds later on in the year. But unfortunately, Faker said nobody beats me twice in a best of five unless you're named G2 2019 because it was now... It, it was a sweep in, in these uh, quarterfinals at Worlds, but it was a competitive three-game set. There was definitely a lot of back and forth, some crazy plays, some crazy team fights throughout, but uh, T1 clearly the better squad and would advance to semis where they played another LPL team and, of course, eventually come up short against DRX, but they did get the revenge of the revenge for uh, losing to RNG at MSI. It's it's just so insane how many times both Baker and Xiaohu had met on the international stage. 
Obviously, this rivalry, they're only meeting on the international stage when they're from the LPL and LCK, respectively. But I can't remember a single disappointing matchup between these two iconic mid laners. No reason to think this year's World Championship will be any different. A huge boost to either of these players' legacy. Uh, whoever comes away with this, I mean, Faker's legacy is pretty set in stone, pretty safe, and so is Xiaohu's, let's be honest. Three MSI titles, he's won the LPL a bunch of times, even if Xiaohu does not win a world championship, this is the first time he's even made it to the finals. He is now gonna have played Faker in every possible stage, except for play-ins, I guess, at the world championship. They played in the group stage, played in quarters, played in semis, played in finals, even though he's beaten him at the MSI Grand Finals, he has never taken down the unkillable Demon King on the World Championship stage. We'll see if he can get it done with Weibo and the boys as slightly large underdogs in the matchup heading into this one with the momentum for T1 going to an all-time high. But it truly feels like RNG is one of the international um, opponents that Faker has respected the most over the years because, as I mentioned, some of the best highlights that he's had on these international events have come against RNG. Feel like he needs, feels the need to step up to another level when he's matching up against them. And he has done it time and time and time again. And I don't expect it to be any different with it being Weibo instead of RNG in the 2023 World Championship Finals. But truly one of the greatest rivalries we've had in professional League of Legends esports. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric and thank you to all you beautiful people for watching as always. And you best believe we will catch you on that flippity flip.